Hi, Doug Littrell again. It's morning after Rockfest. Well, it might be afternoon now, after 12. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to read something I just posted on If Matter Were Eternal. <clears throat> One pound equals 4.448. 2216N as in Newtons. <clears throat> Newtons are a measure of force that can be compared to the torque of twisting a wire or spring and or how much a spring is depressed or stretched out. The Newtons exerted by one kilogram sitting still on Earth's surface against its surface equals 9.8066 Newtons. If the object has been dropped the number of newtons exerted spikes, of course, for an instant when the object strikes that surface. This is counter to the notion that all things, regardless of mass, fall at the same rate, and then their difference in mass is only expressed when they are being stopped by Earth's surface. When objects fall through Earth's atmosphere, there is air resistance slowing them down already, and when falling through water, there is simply increased resistance, which is germane to air resistance. Most everyone's heads have been screwed up by relativity on things like this right now. now some people try to say also that <clears throat> uh, this thing where things fall at the same rate, uh, regardless of mass, that's only, only if there's a vacuum, okay, like the virtual vacuum that space is. Okay, <clears throat> the thing is, why did they test relativity uh, Galileo by dropping a big rock and a little rock off a tower <clears throat> in Earth's atmosphere. Okay, why are, why are we dropping things in the atmosphere if that doesn't count? Okay, this is the second part of video number six on June 4th, 2017. Um, probably the biggest way to uh, <clears throat> debunk relativity is uh, when you mention gravitational units <clears throat> uh, a small pebble is a gravitational unit it rests on the surface of the earth okay a, sm a small but fairly significant piece of dust if it's not being blown up from the surface of the earth it rests on Earth's surface uh, the pebble has more mass than the, piece of the particle of dust okay <clears throat> uh, neon is a noble gas argon is a noble gas uh, helium's the noble gas. Those are all being held down in the Earth's atmosphere with diatomic oxygen, O2, diatomic nitrogen. They're not just flying off in space. Now, helium is probably lost to space, okay, but a lot of it is in the atmosphere before it's lost to space, okay. But anyway, uh, argon's being held in, xenon's being held in with all the rest of it. They're not being lost to space, as far as we know. I don't <laughs> I think they know pretty for sure on that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> those things are being held by gravity. They have a gravitational relationship, attraction relationship with the Earth. Okay. Now, in principle, according to relativity, in principle, it's equivalence principle. Okay. <clears throat> A helium atom or a neon atom uh, should fall because it has small, less mass than a pebble. Okay, let's say a small pebble or a dust particle resting on the earth. Those should fall at the same time. Well, the thing is that <clears throat> not only is uh, the helium atom and neon atom not falling side by side the same with uh, the pebble, or dust particle. They're not even falling because they have less of a gravitational relationship with the Earth. That's why they're floating up in the atmosphere and the pebbles sitting on the ground and the dust particle. Okay? This is getting absurd. Okay, this is part three of number six, video number six. It's about the Lorentz transformation. I haven't studied the Lorentz transformation too much yet because uh, counterintuitive things tend to make me sick and kind of become distracting so that I can't think about what's really happening, okay? I looked at it on Wikipedia. I've seen it before, you know. Okay, you know, it sounds it's 
probably got a lot of good elements in it. <clears throat> but here's the thing. Uh, it's not it's not how orbits work at all, okay? Like there's a trough. Okay, the trough is a pretty cool idea because, you know, the closer you, what it's representing, as far as I can tell, is the closer you get into a body, you know, the stronger the attraction is and the orbit is, would have more velocity. Okay, that's good. Um, that looks to be what the trough, you know, is doing. But you got the scaffolding there. And it's supposed to be, uh, the scaffolding is supposed to be causing things to go in a circle, in orbit, okay? <clears throat> That's not what happens at all, okay, in reality. When reality, when an object flies by the sun, let's say, and is captured, it, if its mass is too small or velocity too great, it flies off in a parabola. It curves a little bit in the traction to the sun, but then it flies off. It doesn't go in the trough. It missed the trough. Okay. Um, anyway, <clears throat> what's actually happening is uh, gravity is a rectilinear force. It's a straight line force. So when an object, whether it coalesces next to it or it, it's uh, an interloper that came by, it comes by the sun. If its mass is great enough, it's attracted more. That helps it get captured. If it's um, <clears throat> got not as much velocity that also helps it's got to be within range okay when it comes by it's it's turned because it's being tethered by gravity it's tethering it it's turning it okay as it turns to come back toward it it's accelerating at that point because it is coming more toward the sun because gravity is a rectilinear attraction force it comes down around the sun it it um, curves around the sun because it's now closer to the sun as it comes around and, and then it turns and leaves and as it's leaving the area of the sun not going directly away from sun but, but going away and now that attraction force is slowing it it's decelerating until it can slow enough to turn again at its aphelion it's going at its slowest velocity even Kepler knows this just read Kepler's um, you know his laws anyway um, and then at its aphelion, <clears throat> it's going at its slowest rate, and then it, it turns and heads back. When it heads back, it's increasing. Well, that's how orbits work. That's real simple. Anybody can understand that. We don't need curvature of stuff that, that virtually where there's a vacuum. That's like that's like ghosts and stuff. Okay? We don't need that. Um, but the another thing about it is a lot of uh, orbits are are ellipses elliptical and uh, you look at the Lorentz transformation nothing's elliptical how are you gonna you explain an ellipse because the thing has too much velocity and it wants to fly off you know like the uh, gravitational assist or gravitational slingshot idea you know it wants to fly off in a parabolic track but it can't quite so it makes a, uh, uh, any, a longer ellipse like a comet does <clears throat> anyway that's all for now. Doug Littrell again. It's uh, the next day, the next morning, early in the morning, uh, June 5th, 2017. I just wanted to follow up what was in video six uh, with a sentence or two because I left out the word behind. Uh, sometimes when I'm explaining something, <clears throat> I might leave out one of the most critical words that makes the point uh, when you have an elliptical orbit the foci of an ellipse um, one of those is is occupied by the primary that's being or orbited I'm gonna make this several sentences now instead of just a couple <laughs> okay anyway um, the Sun as a primary or if it were another body being orbited you know every orbit has different levels of eccentricity okay there's a number to assign for that I studied that a lot okay uh, the focus the foci are at each end of the ellipse you know the elongated ends there uh, the longer the ellipse uh, the closer the focus the foci are uh, to both ends 
uh, you would be surprised how close they are to the end and how close, like say in, with a comet, uh, cometary, a typical cometary orbit, how close uh, the comet comes to the sun and then how far it goes away at the other end of its ellipse. But anyway, uh, the more circular the orbit is, um, <clears throat> the more toward the center, the primary being orbited is. But generally all orbits are a little bit elliptical at least, and the foci is to one, the focus is to one side. The foci are to one side, or two sides, but uh, only one of the foci is occupied by the primary primary being orbited okay and uh, but anyway <clears throat> when uh, a body is in a an eccentric oh, one more thing uh, in this solar system only Triton uh, moon of uh, I believe it's Neptune um, is has a circular orbit it also has a retrograde orbit uh, if I've got that right and I'm just calling that up from memory. Um, I mentioned it in the past when writing, and I think I've still got that correct. But anyway, <clears throat> it has the most, as far as I know, it has the most circular orbit in the solar system. Some of Earth's orbit is pretty circular. Venus's orbit is fairly circular too. Um, they look like circles when you look at them, but um, they're actually a little bit elliptical. Um, but anyway, when you have an elliptical orbit, generally the the body, I mean, if you had a perfectly circular orbit, the body would be <laughs> balancing uh, the momentum it has moving, trying to move it straight ahead against the tethering of gravity that's pulling it over. And it's perfectly balanced. And so you don't have this acceleration on one side and deceleration on the other side of the orbit. But typically... Um, at least in orbits where, uh, that are more eccentric, it's pretty extreme. It can get pretty extreme where the, the body, and this is the word I left out earlier, uh, the body, uh, when it's moving more away from the sun, okay, the sun is behind it more, and that's pulling it backward, okay? The force of gravity is pulling it backward. And that's what slow, was slowing it down. And that helps it to make its curve and turn at its aphelion. And then once it curves back on around, of course, by its momentum and uh, the force of gravity tethering it, uh, then it begins to accelerate as it's moving back toward the sun. Okay. This is what I... Um, it's a little bit more on orbits, uh, and I left out the word behind previously in this video.